Let's start out with the bare bones of this story. Five black kids have been charged with sexually assaulting, sodomizing four white kids at a high school in Maryland. Nobody knows nothing because they're being charged as juveniles. Nobody knows nothing because not one reporter will say all the people doing the raping were black and all the victims were white. They, they won't even mention the fact that all the victims are the sons of law enforcement officers, cops. So you, now you know. Let's see, let's see how the reporters report this story knowing that they know. Late this afternoon, Montgomery County prosecutors charging three Damascus High School JV football players with rape. And all of this is coming from what is being called a hazing incident. ABC7 Montgomery County reporter Kevin Lewis at Damascus High tonight with the breaking new details for us. Kevin. And Jonathan, a number of current and former Damascus football players tell me hazing has happened before, but nothing to this extent. The alleged rapes taking place on campus after class on Halloween Day. Damascus High School's football program in turmoil after reports of hazing involving a wooden broomstick in the boys' locker room. Sources say the victims were picked in part based on their age and athleticism. Today, police revealed three male students have been charged and four male students identified as victims. The criminal charges include two counts of second-degree rape and two counts of attempted second-degree rape. The criminal case in the hands of the juvenile court system, which means the suspects' names will not be made public. Their future court hearings shielded, too. Even if it was tradition, it shouldn't be tradition at all. You know, sexual assault. Ryan Holt's brother plays on Damascus's varsity team, which recently set a national record for most consecutive high school wins. It is a few members of the team. It's really messed up what happened, but, you know, it shouldn't mess up the score and the reputation, but it does definitely put a dent in it. The JV squad had been undefeated this season, but forfeited its game last night in light of the locker room rape allegations. Today, we stopped by the JV coach's home, but he declined to comment. No one would really expect this to happen here at Damascus because typically everybody's really nice with each other, friendly, and this just has never happened. Now, Damascus High School says its varsity team played no role in these alleged rapes. The varsity squad playing Wooten High School tonight in Rockville. Kickoff set for 6.30. We're live in Damascus. I'm Kevin Lewis, ABC 7 News. And as we come on the air this afternoon, anger after a judge ruled that a fifth suspect in the Damascus rape case will be tried as a juvenile. This teenager accused of being the ringleader of the group involved in that attack. Montgomery County reporter Kevin Lewis live for us in Rockville with reactions to the new developments. Kevin. Michelle Nancy, the judge, went against the advice and request of prosecutors and the Department of Juvenile Services, instead siding with a paid expert witness. His reasoning claims that suspect J.C. Abetti has severe ADHD. The victims um, are outraged. Attorneys speaking on behalf of the four Damascus High School victims claim suspect J.C. Abetti is getting off easy. This young man was six foot one, 240 pounds, um, had no problem laughing as he and his teammates sodomized uh, these young men. Abetti's school record includes 12 suspensions, 61 write-ups, and 141 notices to mom about sexual touching, sexual remarks, fighting, shouting, and cutting class. The defendant uh, suffered from an inability to control his impulses. Defense attorney Dan Whitney hired this clinical psychologist to testify that Abetti has severe ADHD and wasn't properly medicated until now. He couldn't have driven himself to the pediatrician. He couldn't have gone and, and forced the coach to come into the locker room and make sure that things were supervised. The father of one victim told ABC7 following the judge's ruling, I am outraged. My son will be outraged. This attack is something you hear about happening in a federal penitentiary or a prison yard, not in Montgomery County Public Schools. Prosecutors express frustration, too, in part because juvenile court uses kid gloves. It's a reality that th this young man 
or, or anybody that goes through the juvenile system is going to be back into the community, reintegrated, probably in about a year. I love that psychologist at the end there. He's saying, well, we can't blame the kid for doing all that raping because uh, he wasn't on enough drugs. Please, sir, I want some more. That's the, that's the standard now. That's the standard of black on white hostility, black on white violence, black on white mayhem and dysfunction. So wildly out of proportion. Black kids get to walk because we didn't give them enough drugs. We didn't have them expose them to enough crazy psychologists who will just ex excuse the worst possible, worst imaginable behavior. And now we got these cops sending their children to, a, to this school, public school. The kids are being attacked because they're white by black people and nobody wants to even raise an eyebrow or suggest that has, that means, that has any meaning whatsoever. That's how sick this is all getting. That's how much denial, deceit, and delusion we're seeing every day. All because they don't want to make the black kids angry.